It's good to see these scenes in the garden and see how important the evergreen conifers and other shrubs are to the, to the overall structure. I mean, it's great to have the acers and the deciduous trees coming out, but these dwarf evergreen shrubs are really, the, the sh provide the shape and the form of the garden. Starting right down here, we have a massive cassiope. I mean, really big. If, if I sort of can stick a, a foot out, you can see. I mean, it's a, it's a meter across. Cassiope tetragona. And round some of these conifers here, in the, against the, the thinking stone. And a lovely little chamois separaris, you can tell from the trillium of autumn, which is in itself is not that big. This is a really nice compact um, chamois separaris obtusa. It's either minimar or minor. We got both years ago and I can't quite remember what they all are precisely. What you do have to watch, and we can keep them in control. We will get here where a bit pops up like that. So ideally, you just want to take it off and you can usually do it. Now the wood's too hard, I was going to say, you can sometimes break it. You can certainly break the tip off, but you can sometimes pull. But when it's a bit woody, I'll need to get the, get the pruners and just remove that. But you could use that as a cutting. Because th this one has been raised from a cutting from the original plants. Now, it's interesting, and I can tell you that when you're taking cuttings of these dwarf conifers, if I take a cutting from this bit that's starting to sprout up and shoot ahead and grow sort of out from the, the more compact nature, this will produce a plant that is quite different in character. It will be more of an upright growth. If you want to retain the round compact trunk, then you have to come right down and take your cuttings from down at the sides. And these plants, these cuttings will stay much better and more in the nature of the bush. So round here, the, all these, uh, the lovely green foliage, this is all the Corridalis cross Creighton blue hybrids just coming through. Another big cassiope over there. And round here another nice conifer. Uh, again, this is a very old one. Very old conifer. We've had this for a long time. I, I, I forget now. I think it's a crypt, one of the cultivars of Cryptomeria japonica. And again here, this one was raised from a cutting that I took from a friend. And I, I will regularly take cuttings. But again, don't, you know, if you use these cuttings up here, you'll get a more upright format. Much better to take my cuttings from round the side here, which will produce me this lovely round kind of conifer. So there's one and there's another. And if we go over, these two are both raised from cuttings from that chamois spurs, obtusus. And you'll see that this one, I'm rather than letting it be a bush, it's we're almost cutting it up, so it's becoming a bit like a, a small bonsai. And I'll create little clouds and see it. And that's exactly what we've done with this pine here on the end of this bed. It was really taking up too much space. So as well as raising the branches that we did last year to expose this lovely trunk and open up this planting area, what we do every year is candle prune. And by candle pruning I mean as the new growth comes, just at this stage when it's soft, we just literally come in you can just bend it and break it off like that, simple as that. And that gives you this a good prune without any scars of cuttings. I'm doing this without gloves on. I would normally wear gloves because the, the sticky resin will make a mess of your hands. So as, as these come up, we will do all of that and nip all of those off. Here's one here with, you can see the flowers. These are the male flowers. And we also get cones on this bush sometimes. But if I come round and see if I can see any cones, it's mostly male flowers I'm seeing. So there'll be no cones. But all this bush will go round in candle prune over the next wee while. But 
it. It's a really nice pine. I'm really pleased with it, but it would be significantly bigger. I think it's Pinus Montana. Not a cultivar, just a normal Montana that for donkey's years we've kept pruned back in this way. I'll be coming just round and along the bed some more dwarf philodices. Down here a really nice Philodice chirulia. Looking a bit sad actually with the the snow has done damage to the flowers. And that's a really nice plant. And here's another seedling of it up here, showing the different nature some. These are both roughly the same age. That one's really been much slower. And this is Shamisiparis, this is the green globe, showing absolutely what you have to do with these conifers. This green globe, as you can see here, forms a globe, but look at this unwelcome growth. It's kind of reverting. And if we do nothing, because that's so strong and vigorous, that will grow up and become a much bigger tree. And the, the, the bush itself that we want will die out. So today I'm going to go and get my snippers and pruners and prune that out and that out. And all these bits coming out that look that they're going to run away and down the side. Just give it a little gentle prune over. A good way to, to prune lightly is just like with the candle pruning of the pine. When it's a soft green growth, you, you can just basically pluck it. And, and just pluck. And by plucking off the top, you will cause it to... You'll just slow the growth down. So I can pluck all those bits off, you see, and this. That takes those off. And it just helps retain when you keep your little conifers in good shape and in a more compact size for much longer. So there you can see how important these plants are in our garden.